Um, and yet when I got out of the subway station downtown and walked up there and observed what 37% of the population biking actually is and felt that, um, it, it really struck me that, oh my God, this is actually real. And then, you know, after being there a whole week and recognizing that this wasn't just some show they were putting on for Mike's benefit, <laughs> this is actually how they lived. It, it really, um, it struck me. And we were there in December. It was, the weather was as bad as it ever gets in Seattle. It snowed a little bit. Um, and yet everyone was still out on their bicycles. You know, if someone here in Seattle rode in that type of weather, you thought they were crazy. And yet that was just the way you got around. Um, the, the other thing, one of the things that Sally mentioned that I, I think was really struck me was, uh, at first I was, it was almost discouraging because it's like, we could never be this way. Um, but then sitting down and talking to the, some of the transportation planners in Copenhagen, um, and asking them how they got there and they went through the 30 some year history and they said, well, it started of course in one little spot. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking of, of the design, the change we're making down at, I don't know what it's going to be called, but where Westlake comes into yeah. Fifth. And that's, you know, that was kind of the one little spot that, that they started with. And then there was another spot, and then they connected them and made good ped ped pedestrian connections and bike connections. And um, frankly, I don't want to wait 30 years <laughs> to get there. Um, but I think also recognizing that some forethought, uh, patience, but also with a sense of urgency, um, and recognizing that, not just thinking about what are the things that we can do tomorrow, but what are the things we need to be thinking about and um, kind of forecasting so that, foreshadowing so that 10 years from now, other people in leadership um, throughout the city will have the opportunity to make those next steps, um, I think is really important. One of the other things that for me was a real benefit, I, I went on this trip just before I became a count, I, I had been elected, but I haven't taken office. Um, the peer group I was with, it was, it was really great. There were only 10 of us on the trip. But to actually spend a week, um, pretty much, ex you know, there was no family members there, and it was just a bunch of total urban walks <laughs> that were really interested in things like district energy and waste energy and transportation and urban design. Um, and to, you know, after the couple days, you know, all the facade comes off and you're just hanging out with people, talking about things they care about and think about. That part was, was really valuable. Um, I think one of the challenges um, to folks that I sustain is that, you know, almost by definition, the, the type of people that, that go on these trips, it's a fairly narrow um, segment of the social class. And I think when you look at, you know, some of the diversity that we have in Seattle that you don't necessarily see in some of these Northern European communities, it would be interesting to figure out a way to incorporate some of the broader perspectives that aren't just the transportation and energy wonks, but people that really do care about the shape of Seattle to, to get their input and feedback uh, in real time going forward. Try to figure that out. With uh, challenge, <laughs> but.